OK, let's have a look at the Toronto Scorpion side as they'll run under the paddock this afternoon. At fullback, we have David Hill. The wingers, Shane Tobin and Brett Ryder. The centres, Glenn Friendo and Mark Hollis. The halves, Wally Crawford and Mick Chant. They'll play a vital part in this game. At lock, we have the captain coach, Mal Graham. The second row is John McKilvey and Kevin Maher. The front row of Danny McKilvey and Wayne Smith. The hooker is Jamie Forbes. Well, Western Suburbs certainly deserve their place in this year's grand final. And Craig Higgins, the captain coach of Waratah Mayfield, you know all about the Rosellas plant. They've got a very, very strong side indeed. Oh, got a very strong side indeed. As you said, they're looking for their 16th win on the trot. They're a side that can throw the ball around. Their wingers like to score tries. And their second play, second phase plays second to none. But during the, gut, during the year, they've found that their defence has been one of their strongest points. Not only can they attack, but also their defence is just immaculate at times. How do you see it? I still think West will get up and win it by a few points. OK, let's have a look at that Rosellas sign as they will trot onto the paddock this afternoon. At fullback, the youngster from the Jersey flag, Garth Brennan. The wingers, Tim Morrison and Patrick Nandy. The centres, Darren Tracy and Neil Baker. The halves, Eddie Smith and Tony Price. The lock is Brett Hode. The second row is Craig Dodd and Lorne McDougall. The front row, Greg Price and Tony McDonnell. And their hooker is Paul Bowen. Well, David Hill about to get us underway here. The 1991 Tui's Cup Newcastle Rugby League Premiership. Referee Paul Lovett in control. And it's going to be Patrick Nandy to run it out for the first touch of the ball for the Rosellas. The Toronto Scorpions in their first grand final in their 31-year history. And I would say 90% of the crowd here at Harker Oval are right behind the Scorpions this afternoon. Law McDougall takes it up for the Rosellas now. Swarming defence by the Scorpions. And these uh, first few moments uh, should be a testing time for both sides. Brett Ryder now for uh, Toronto, just swivels out. He's about uh, eight from the halfway in his own territory. Mick Chant now from dummy half for the Scorpions, takes it up to halfway. Now John McKelvey for uh, Toronto, hard-working second rower. Jamie Forbes, he'll live at the dummy half all day. Kevin Maher, former North Sydney and Gold Coast player. Also the MMI uh, country representative player for Newcastle this year. Now Danny McKelvey, the hard-working prop. He tries to make a few metres for Toronto. Last tackle coming up for the Scorps. Chant now. Back to Glenn Frendo, who hoisted high in the air, and the wind's got hold of it. Pushing it left, and that's going to be out on the full. Or is, uh, has found touch in the first come of the match is about to go down. Richard, uh, of course, these first few moments tense for both sides. Yeah, that's right, Mike. They're, uh, they've both started out reasonably well. I think West would have been looking for a much better kick, and I'm sure Frendo would have been then too. But uh, it's a kicking game. It's going to be a territorial game, this. Uh, if, I think if Mr Lovett can give us a good five metres, we'll see a very good game of play, football. And that's the first time that uh, Richard Jones has called him Mr Lovett. Craig Higgins, uh, we've seen the first mistake by the Rosellas. How much pressure would they be under going in as uh, probably favourites for this match? I'd say they'd be feeling a bit there. That was a crucial mistake there by Tony Price. Maybe could have been a penalty. Went either way and Lovett's uh, ruled a, a scrum. So we're about to see the second scrum of the match. The grand final for 1991. The Tui's Cup, a massive crowd in here at Harker Oval. Great to see the resurgence of the Newcastle Rugby League. Many people said it would die with the advent of the Newcastle Knights. Probably was down a little bit for the first couple of years. But by Jed's come back in a big way as Ben Frendo made a couple of yards. And David Hill was there in support. He couldn't get his arms free, the former Newcastle Knights player. They go the short side. Ma, the danger man for the Scorpions. And over the top, Tracy and also uh, Eddie Smith there, the tacklers for the Western suburb side. Forbes to Chant. Quickly to Crawford, the leading point scorer in the league. Can't get around Law McDougal. They drag him down. Just inside the 22. 20 out now, Forbes to Chant, gave a very short ball to McKelvey, McKelvey now gives it on to uh, Jan and Western Suburbs are back in possession through Tony Price, and he makes some good metres ever by G, that was close also. Very, very, one thing that Western are going to have to keep their eye on is Danny McKelvey's running game, he's a very strong running forward, if they continue to let him do that, he will pop those balls up for his support players all day. And uh, there's plenty of uh, support in the Scorpion side. They'll just run off their forwards all day. Oh, yeah, they'll do great support play there. Especially blokes like Kevin Maher. You've got to back him up, get close to him. He can slip a good ball. Now, this, is where, this is where referee Lovett has to assert his authority in the game, Mike. The ruck area has been a contentious issue, not only in Winfield Cup, but in local football. He must clear those rucks early and let us have a good game of football. First penalty of the match to Western Suburbs. Neil Baker with his first touch of the footy. Very, very nervous, Neil Baker going into this grand final, his first year as captain coach of the Western Suburbs Rosellas. 
There is talk that uh, he may be playing his final game for the club too. Timmy Morrison takes it up, gets it into uh, Scorpions territory by five. Bowen to Craig Dodd, who's been playing pretty good football in the last few weeks. A Tyler second rower plays it now. Bowen switches. Greg Price. Greg Price is another player who uh, Toronto must stop, Mike. Home uh, to Price. Gives it back inside to Law McDougall. He's left it behind and Toronto come up with possession. But Greg Price, as you say, Richard, is one of those players that if he gets his arms free, he will just make the opposition really pay. That's right. As Craig said in that preview of the match, that uh, Price is a little bit fitter than he has been. And um, his, his running play and his, his ball displays this year have been nothing but sensational. So referee love it with uh, the second penalty of the match. Yes, uh, Greg Price really has a stand on me in the last few weeks. He often, uh, if, if play's not going his way, uh, kind of gives in a little bit. But by G, he's been playing fabulous footy. Oh, he's been playing real well. And that ball he slipped in the uh, major semi against Toronto, the flick pass, that was a great ball. But already Toronto and West both had opportunities and put balls down, so that we have to watch their handling. Plenty of nerves out there for both sides. Of course, the spectators here expecting a lot of the uh, Toronto side. Danny McKelvey now taking it up. Good hard run by the front row for the Scorpions. Good defence there by Tony Price and Paul Bowen. Forbes, they go the short side. Graham standing out amongst the backs. He would love nothing more than to win here this afternoon, not only for the uh, Toronto Scorpions, but also to prove a point to a few Western Suburbs players. Oh, definitely. I think now this is a big one for Mal. He's got a lot of personal at stake here. Glenn Friendo kicking behind the defence now. Notice an early change here for, uh, for West. Right. Uh, Tony McDonald coming off, and it's uh, going to be Wayne Dawson who will uh, go on to the side. But uh, referee Lovett has got Toronto up inside early. And uh, Tony McDonald, that looks uh, quite a nasty injury. He's right knee's very, very heavily strapped. Here it is again. Garth Brennan just taking the ball up for Western Suburbs. Steps off the right, and it was James, Johnny McKelvey that uh, went a little bit high. And uh, the penalty went to Western Suburbs. They're the sorts of tackles we're going to see in the opening stage. You see, that was more a shoulder charge, I feel. I think Jock McKelvey's probably a little bit. That, that's a big loss for West Tony McDonald there. They're easy, big forward. He makes a lot of yards, and obviously he's gone in the game not 100% fit. How would Wayne Dawson uh, feel coming on after just playing 80 minutes in the reserve grade oh, grand it's, final? It's a tough call. There's a big game in reserve grade, a lot of hard football, and he's going to find it hard. A Greg, big loss for West. Greg Price, they hit him pretty hard. McKelvey and Graham. Now it's Dodd. He's going to have to lift his work rate for the Rosellas now that they're uh, one man down in their original starting lineup. Bowen, Tony Price. Tries to go straight through, gets out of one, tried to slip the ball away, and Mal Graham's got it, and the scrum will go down. Fair yeah, call by referee Lovett there. The ball was knocked down by the Toronto player. Let's have a look at the lower grade scores so far here at uh, Harker Roval in third grade. Western Suburbs 18-14 over Lakes United. In reserve grade, it was a great win to the South Newcastle side, 32-24, and you are pretty happy, Jonesy. Mike, well, that's one of the best wins I've ever been associated with. I think South thoroughly deserves their win. Great credit to David Fleming and Jim Pangilly, his manager. Fancy wet South winning, and we've got a city with the rest of the afternoon. Yeah, that was an unbiased opinion. It's, it's, <laughs> there's going to be a few comments creeping about the reserve grade side all afternoon, I'm afraid. Eddie Smith, they go the short side once again. Baker looking to link up. Greg Price is there. They dive all over him. Good tackle there by Mick Chant. Bowen a dummy half for the Rosellas. A chance now. Gives it to Wayne Dawson. Big shoulder charge there by John McKelvey. And Dawson felt every inch of that one, and he's down for the count. Unsung hero of this uh, Toronto side is John McKelvey. He can hit, and they stay hit, as we see Wayne Dawson here. Let's have a look at that again. As we come through it again, Dorso just running on the angle out, and Jock McKelvey just put the shoulder in. I don't think Dorso, being probably a little bit tired and hasn't been got into the game yet, so I think he'd get up. There wasn't too much on it. Dawson, very gingerly to his feet, plays it now. Bowen. Price just standing there. The run around with Bowen. There's a heavy tackle by Frendo on uh, Brett Hode. It's a good tackle by Frendo. Price now. Field goal to tip. It's over. And it's a waved away by referee Lovett. And uh, Toronto will get the restart from the 22. But early pressure by uh, Western Suburbs. That's right. They haven't had much uh, territorial advantage. But when they do, they can certainly convert. They're a uh, good side with the ball, West. We'll see how they defend now, trying to keep Toronto in their own real estate. Not a bad option to take early. Yeah, why not? A field goal, one point can come in handy. And if you can get them early, that's when the pressure's not on. McKelvey now, held up by McDougall and also Bowen. Forbes, asked for a quick play the ball. Chant, out to Ma. Just decides to uh, die with a tackle. Ten from the halfway. 
Toronto opened very well against Western Suburbs in the major semi-final, but then West hit their straps to uh, really put the pressure on Toronto and run away with the game in the end. Ma now, back for the kicker in uh, Glenn Frendo. Glenn doesn't really follow through with his kicks, but uh, that found some uh, good space. Nandy now, the speed machine for uh, the Rosellas. If he breaks a tackle or two, he really is an excitement machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. From the Knights under 19s, and he once he gets in the clear, there's no stopping him. One thing I noticed about Patrick Nandy, but Mike, I think he should try and beat players more. He's quite happy if, if they're in front of him, he'll try and run over them. If he's got space, he'll use it, and he's very, very fast. Dodge now for Western Suburbs. They can't well in their own territory at the moment. Bowen, Tony Price to Baker. Gave a delightful ball to Tracy, now to Nandy. On the grandstand touch side, but referee Lovett says the pass has gone forward. Plenty of cover there for the Toronto side. I don't think there was any danger that Nandy was going to go too far. I think that's one thing they'll have to watch is Neil Baker's pressure pass. Uh, cut out balls, especially in their own 22. They're not afraid and it's worked for them all year. Yeah, Toronto play that very compressed up and in game. And Glenn oh. Frendo's a master at it, but he could get caught out. Crawford to Frendo. Looking to uh, put a player through a gap, but he takes the tackle himself of uh, Eddie Smith and also Darren Tracy. Mark Hollis, his first touch of the ball in the grand final. Only made a metre or two for the Scorpions. Frendo a dummy half. They go left. Turned back inside of Kevin Mark. Got his pass back to Mick Chant. And he's not going anywhere, says the Western Suburbs defensive Baker. And uh, now Forbes. Forbes rides a little gap. Gives it out. And Ryder's good the ball. Great play from Jamie Forbes. I expect him to do that. He's a very good, smart, getting away from dummy half. Here it is again. Yeah, Forbes takes it away from dummy half. He's very quick. He looks, he draws his player, goes on to right it, but he puts the ball down. Another opportunity to Toronto down the tubes. So Toronto putting some early pressure on uh, Western Suburbs. Price. Only 10 minutes gone. It's still fairly uh, 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 trying to unsettle the opposition period of the game. So. McDougall, Western Suburbs in strife. Hooker Paul Bowen is getting uh, his hand strapped on the sidelines here also. They've already lost Tony McDonald. As Tony Price chips over the top, can he regather? Mick Chance there. Comes away now. And uh, gets out of the tackle of Greg Price, but a big shoulder charge by Eddie Smith puts him down. Mick Chance played extremely well in the last couple of weeks. Shane Tobin now. He takes it up. He's brought down a metre short of the halfway in his own territory. Forbes calls for quick play of the ball. Now to Crawford, thought about the pass to Danny McKelvey who had overrun him. Wayne Smith, who was hit by a sensational tackle by Trevor Cray last week, has come back. Crawford, Kevin Ma, cuts out one. They can't handle David Hill, picked up by Neil Baker. Time now for uh, the Western Suburbs Rosellas to launch into attack. Timmy Morrison, Dodd. Is that grey area of the field that we talk about between the 22s where if Toronto continually turn the ball over to West, this is where they're at their most dangerous and they will use it. Baker to Smith. Second tackle only, and West were looking to spread the ball. Could say a lot about the uh, trend of this game. Price at dummy half to Tony Price. Couldn't link up as the defence had moved up very quickly, but somehow he got a pass to Patrick Nandy. Nandy down the touchline. Can he get inside now? And a brilliant covering tackle by Glenn Frendo, who had a swing over the top to Frendo. Unlocked They're about Frendo. five out. Brennan now. A shocking pass. Kevin Ma gets a toe to it, but there's the penalty. Toronto up inside the five, and this might be a chance for Neil Baker to put first points on the board here in the 1991 Tui's Cup Grand Final at the Newcastle Rugby League. Let's take a look at that action all again. Tony Price just plays, just standing off Price here, touch. But a great pass there to Patrick Nandy. He's in some clear space, as we said, but here we go. Glenn Frendo, possibly the best covering tackler in the uh, competition. So Neil Baker about to attempt the first points in the 1991 Tui's Cup Newcastle Rugby League Grand Final. He scored 122 points so far this year from four tries and 52 goals and two field goals. Moves in now, strikes it, and it's away to the left. And the score remains nil all here at Harker Oval in the Grand Final. So Brett Ryder with the restart. Patrick Nandy on this uh, grandstand side of the field. He's hobbling too. So Western Suburbs in the wars as far as injuries are concerned. Yeah, they look like they're in a bit of trouble. Uh, as you said, Patrick Nandy's limping. And Paul Bowen, he, he went off to get his hand strapped. So they could be in for a few problems here. Neil Baker, nervous shot at goal. Richard? Yeah, uh, Neil certainly set it up, pointing the right hand uh, to allow for the win. But 
Wasn't a good kick from Merlin, I'm sure he'd be glad to get that first one out of the way. He'll be right now. To the halfway. It's Brett Hode, Mike. I expect him to have a big impact on this game. He's a very good player. Bowen to Tony Price. Good ball to Weddy Smith. Steps off the right. The defence is there to drag him down, but he's into Toronto's territory by uh, six metres. Bowen, he will live at dummy half all day. Craig Dodd gets out of one tackle, looking to unload, but can't do so. Last tackle now for the Rosellas. They go the short side. Chip kick over the top. Kevin Murray is back there. Let's it bounce. It's uh, going to be a Tony Price prize. It no callback, says referee. Love it. But uh, that was a very, very good kick and chase by the Rosellas. Well, it would be very interesting to see this replay. Referee Lovett obviously in a good spot to call it. Here it is. They go the short side to Bowen. Baker with a chip over the top. Fair try. Now, Some I think he may have given the penalty in the back there with uh, Baker running into the back of a Toronto player. Yeah, there was definitely a Toronto player went down. It just depends if... Here we go. Bowen goes on to Baker. He puts up the chip kick. Follows through. Is there a player in front of him? Down goes Forbes. So Neil Baker has given Jamie Forbes a bit of a shove there, and that's possibly the uh, infringement that referee Lovett was looking for because Tony Price was definitely onside. I think Bakes would have been well to let him go there because uh, I don't think he was impeding in the play. Price, he seemed always in a much better spot than Neil to chase the kick. Kevin Ma makes the break for the Scorpions. Neither of those two players were going to figure in any further of that play anyway. That's exactly right. Mickey Chant now. Been a tyro so far in this first half. Forbes to Wally Crawford. Scored a great try against South last week to uh, put Toronto into the grand final. Last tackle now coming up for the Scorps. Forbes a dummy half. Well, they put on a set move here. Frendo, the little chip kick over the top. He hasn't uh, worked those two well in recent weeks because Neil Baker and uh, the West scored a great try from uh, a chip kick by Glenny Frendo. And uh, also, well, Lakes United did the same thing out at Lowell Peacock. But uh, that's a good kick. Let's have a look at that action again. Just a little stab kick. You said before, Mike, that uh, Glenny Frendo doesn't follow through with his kicks, but they all are, I feel, just tactical kicks, mainly trying to uh, trap uh, Western Suburbs in their own in goal. And I think that's a big play that the Knights use, actually, and this is where probably Glenn, Glenn got it from. They call it double deals. They try and force the opposition in goal and then receive another six tackles. Now, if Tony Price is down, that was a pretty solid tackle by Mal Graham. We're only talking during the week that uh, Tony Price was the man that uh, Toronto had to shut down. And uh, I suppose that's made him a little bit wary of uh, what's going to go on this afternoon. Oh, he'll definitely come in for some special treatment. He's the linchpin of their attack, and Mouse put one on me. We've got a bit of uh, information on Tony McDonald. He's done his media ligament, so that's bad luck for Tony. He's had a lot of injuries, broken jaws and broken arms, so not a good way to go out in the grand final. Law McDougall now. Baker. He'll have to take command. Eddie Smith gets it back, Baker. Brilliant ball. Now they've got support. He's got Nanny. Gives it to Nanny. He's got too much pace for Tobin. And here's the open try of the grand final, is it? No. Magnificent tackle by Brett Ryder. Now he's come from the opposite wing to put Nanny into touch. Great defence. Got him for a double movement. Well, let's a have a look movement. at all that action again. Here it is. Baker made the break. Neil just comes down. He positions Nandy very, very well. I thought Fred Shane Tobin was going to pick Nandy up, but he had too much pace. Brett Ryder, what a tremendous effort from the, from the opposite wing. And that's Force. where he gets him for a double movement. Yeah. Fair call by referee, love it. Well, what sort of thing would that do to Toronto's confidence? Ryder's tackle. Hey, well, that's where they're going to get him during the game. On, on the outside, down the flanks. They've got him a few times. There goes Baker. He looks for Nandy. Nandy's away. Right, Tobin can't get to him. Across comes Ryder and bundles him in the touch. That's a great, that's a, could be a match saving tackle, that one. Well, Western Suburbs are dangerous out wide and uh, Toronto uh, were really stretched there, but Ryder came from nowhere to make that tackle and uh, that was superb. Patrick Nandy just calling for some attention too. I think he's got a, a sore hand as well, but that leg injury certainly healed up pretty quick because he was away and brought down centimetres from posting the first points of the 1991 Grand Final. Oh, so there'll be a few extra schooners on the bar for Brett Ryder after that effort. Glenn Frendo, a towering punt kick. Garth Brennan in good position to take this one. It bounces away from him. None of the Toronto players on side. Tony Price picks up. Now he's on side and Tobin makes a good uh, ankle tackle right on the 22 in Western Suburbs Territory. Brennan now. Again, we see that long last last long play from Westmark was... Uh, was instituted just from their own 22, so Toronto are going to have to be very, very cleared up here to stop West from those spread balls. See Glenny Frenner, they're very rugged defender. You know you're in a game when you're up against him. Greg Price looking to offload, does so to Tracy. 
And uh, Greg Price gave a little one to Glenn Friendo, who kind of instigated that, but that might have been uh, from before. The touch judge is in, but I think referee uh, Paul Lovett has handled this situation, although he's calling Glenn Friendo out. I think he's got Glenn here for something that happened in the previous tackle. Like it was, uh, it was not much to it, but it's a grand final. We're big boys now. We try to play the game hard, but there's no one obviously been hurt or impeded. I'm a little bit surprised there hasn't been a bit more. Well, Could that's right. Uh, but I think the traditional softening up periods are just that. There's only hard tackles. I think you go back over all the, the past five or six grand finals, and there's been no silly stuff. We uh... Let's have a look at this again and see if we can pick up what happened. Here it is. Law McDougall gives it to uh, Darren Tracy. And Friendo comes in over the top. Oh, it's not a bad shot. Yeah, he, he knows how to line him up, and he didn't miss there. Yeah, it does a penalty, I suppose. And in the next play of the ball, the penalty went. Greg Price. Now, right on the 22, Western Suburbs. A chance for them to really attack, but they're uh, very shallow at the moment as Hode takes it up, and that's another good tackle there by the Toronto side. Forbes it was. A very busy player, Bowen now. Gives it to uh, Wayne Dawson. Offloads to Bowen. Bowen now to Tony Price. Shows it once, shows it twice, takes the tackle. Right in front of the uprights on the 22 here at Harker Oval. Bowen now. Gives it to Eddie Smith. Showed it to Baker. Quickly steps out of the tackle. Still going, Eddie Smith. Very and strongly brought down. Very strong player, Eddie Smith. Very hard to pull down. Tracy now. Gives it to Greg Price. Damaging from here if he can stand an offload. Inside the 10, last tackle coming up now. What will they do here? Look for Baker. Baker now. Cuts out one. Gives it to Darren Tracy. Still going. Can he get his own three? No. Flicks it away to Baker. He does so. Gives it out and Andy's standing out wide. They've got a score and they're in. Well, Weston Savage so just keeping that ball alive. And Patrick Nanny threatened all day to score. And he's finally brought up the first points of the 1991 Rugby League Grand Final. Here yeah, again, they get him down the flanks. Here we go. Paul Bowen in at dummy half. Gets the ball onto Baker. Baker runs a little. He looks for Tracy. Picks up Tracy. Tracy's hitting the tackle. He's able to swing around. Stands off. Well, was that off the ground or not? Long ball out there to Nandy. And no one's on Nandy. And again, they get him down the left-hand flank. Last tackle plays, Weston. Just Nandy placing the ball there unopposed, but uh, Neil Baker and uh, set up that play at first. He came flat across the ruck to uh, pick up young Tracy, who managed to uh, offload in the tackle, and um, then Baker got the ball back and continued on with those long passes that he's been getting away with all year. So Neil Baker now, none from one so far today. His second shot at goal, trying to convert the Patrick Nandy try. What about do you think? 26 metres out. Three in from touch, moves in, strikes it well, but it's away to the right once again. So one left, one right, and the score remains 4-0 in favour of Western Suburbs in the 1991 Tui's Cup Grand Final here at Harker Oval. David Hill with a restart. So Western Suburbs now apply the pressure to uh, the Toronto team. As Law McDougall runs it out and met there in a good tackle by John McKelvey. And Mal Graham in there just to uh, hold his progress totally. Dawson takes it up. He's got to be feeling the pinch because it's fairly warm out here today. Different conditions that most of the players have been used to in the last few weeks. Oh, definitely. It's a great summer's day, more like here. But it'd be interesting to see if they do bring Wayne Dawson on with the interchange. I'm sure they'll have to use the interchange situation now. Smokey just can't continue. He played a very, uh, very tough game of football before. And of course, we all know they were beaten soundly by South Newcastle in the reserve grade. I thought that had come up again as Baker <laughs> finds touch about three from the 22. And this is where he's going to be damaging Neil Baker with his uh, long kicks and touch finers. He's uh, got a mercurial boot and uh, he's going to be a real big pain in the uh, the bot for Toronto as far as his kicks are concerned. Oh, definitely. And t West are going to have to go in with a good lead in this first half because they've got the win. So they've got to start getting a few points on the board. Toronto won't be panicking. They've come from behind in their past two matches. The last match, 14-2. South led at half-time and Toronto stormed home. David Hill. Let's have a look at some of the stats so far in this uh, first half. The scrums are three. All the penalties favour Western Suburbs by one. And they've both made three mistakes, which is uh, probably 
not surprising, although that uh, mistake rate is fairly low for a grand final. Yeah, the you nerves know, not there. Yeah, the nerves aren't there. They're just playing. The game's gone from end to end, and no team really has got on top as yet. I think we'll find that all those mistakes were made in the first 10 minutes of the game, really. It's, uh, as you say, it's been fairly uh, mistake-free. And here we see Glenn Frendo just positioning a kick again, just for his chasing through. Nandy with the ball. Taven's got him this time. With the help there of Wally Crawford. West now. Tony Price. Tony Price is not afraid to be involved in this game and take the ball forward. Uh, a little bit perturbed sometimes the West forwards. Possibly let Tony do a little bit too much, but one thing that struck me about Tony Price this year, he's a very tough customer and he's not afraid to do that work. Finish one point behind R. Jones in the MMI Country Rugby League Player of the Year. And awesome. couldn't make the country side. Smith, Baker, brilliant pass to Nandy. Down the touchline, has got to go inside. Good play, Patrick Nandy was too close to the touchline. Took play in a few metres, but Baker again looking dangerous. Oh, definitely, those cut-out passes, and Mao's going to have to look at that at half-time. They're getting down that left-hand flank again. Wayne Smith takes a good grab there for Toronto, so their turn now to mount some pressure on the Western Suburbs defence. Ma to Chant, to Graham, looking to link up. He's got Crawford in support, but he's brought down in a fine tackle. I don't know if it's West Planet or not, but they're, Mike, but they're trying to um, force this play down Shane Tobin's wing. Now, Shane Tobin is not a recognised winger. He has been, as we see. There was Chan just threw it over the head, but it, into touch. And the scrum will go down just inside the 22 in Western Suburbs Territory. What I was saying, uh, Shane Tobin is, uh, was more a back row, a second row lock player that now converted. I think mean, he's done a very good job for Toronto this year, but uh, I'm afraid if he gets caught out by Patrick Nandy, he just won't be quick enough to catch it with him. And it's a win against the head. So Mick Chant now. Toronto, they knock on. Penalty gone. Up inside the five Western Suburbs. And here's uh, Toronto's chance to put first points on the board for them this afternoon. So Wally Crawford now trying to get Toronto on the board in the 1991 Grand Final. 160 season points, five tries, 70 goals, steps in. And waxes straight over the black dot. So here at Harker Oval, it's only two points the difference. Western Suburbs lead 4-2 with 28 minutes gone in the grand final. Neil Baker with the restart. Wayne Smith takes it well. Toronto on the board just before half time. Uh, that certainly will give them a little bit of a lift. Oh, the more points they can get on against this win, that's going to be their advantage in the second half. How much do you think's in the win, Richard? Oh, like, oh yeah, it's. It seems to have settled a little bit, actually, from the end of the reserve grade in South one, but it's um, it's going to be... Uh, it's, it seems to come and go, the wind. It's gusting, but... It, but um, the funny thing about kicking here at Harker Oval is that the ground runs down on all four corners, and uh, Neil Baker certainly knows that, and Toronto certainly had a look, look over here yesterday, but, uh, you know, the, the wind is probably a little bit stiffer up high than we can feel down here at ground level. So Toronto now with the restart. Pretty dubious penalty there. I couldn't actually yeah, see. Yeah, well, he's him for off. offside, and I, I couldn't uh, see where he was offside. Anyway, plays uh, underway once again. We're three short of the halfway. Danny McKelvey now taking it up to the Western Suburbs forwards. Lorne McDougall forces him back along with Paul Bowen. Those players, a lot of responsibility now with the absence of Tony McDonald. They start to spin it wide a little bit, the Scorpions. Mark Hollis. A strong player out there in the centres. Now, is that another penalty? No, referee Lovett says uh, the scrum will go down. That's a bad call. Neil Baker knocked that out of his hand. I suppose Bake's using his experience there. It should have been a penalty to Toronto. Mark Hollis, let's have a look at that again and see if we can pick it up. Here we go. Hollis comes Hollis, in. Good strong run. We'll see what happens in the play the ball here. No, he did actually just drop the ball, Mark Hollis. Neil Baker was there. Think about referee Lovett. If he doesn't see an incident, he'll pack a scrum. Just short of the 22 now. Tony Price gets it away to McDougal. McDougal looking to offload. Does so to Hode. Hode now up over the 22 and met there by Graham and also Wayne Smith. Gets up now. Plays the ball to Bowen. Dawson taking it up strong. He's played pretty well, Smokey, since he's come on. Big responsibility. After 80 minutes in reserve grade, he's played very well so far. Bowen a dummy half again. They go the short side. Tony Price, can he link up? Brennan was there in support, but he took the tackle instead. Been heavily involved, Tony Price, doing a lot of running. Brennan, pass to uh, Greg Price now. Can he stand and deliver? Thought about the pass, somehow gets the pass away. Hode, 
He can't get the pass away, and they lost to half a dozen metres on that occasion. Good defence there by Toronto. Eddie Smith, quickly to Baker. Baker, the little chip over the top, can he regather? Tap back, it's picked up by uh, Ray God, and Western Suburbs back in possession. No, he's, he's going to pack a scrum. I think you'll find Dodds, he lost that ball in the tackle. It was six to go. Toronto's feet, Craig Dodds did actually just lose the ball slightly forward in the uh, tackle. Could have been damaging there for uh, Toronto. Let's have a look at that again. Baker just uh, coming forward off that pass of Eddie Smith. Just that little chip kick over the top, tap back. And it was Forbes who couldn't control. Dodds came up in possession, and you're dead right. He's just uh, dropped the ball. But uh, Toronto now end up with possession. Kevin Ma. Had very much, very much greater field position now, uh, West. Uh, I can't help but think that if the more time West spend with the ball, the more confidence they get, especially a player like Tony Price. So Toronto have done very well to hold them to only one try. McKelvey doing some bullocking work. Push back a couple, comes back to play the ball. Forbes, pretty ordinary play the ball for Toronto. Forbes forced to kick now. Is he going to find touch? I think it is going to dribble in a touch on the 22. And that's a great kick by Jamie Forbes. Showing his versatility from the hooking position. And he really is a tireless worker, young Jamie Forbes. Oh, definitely. He's got a big future in front of him. That kick was into the wind. He kept it nice and low, and he's gained his side about a good 40 metres. Just before half time here, 32 minutes gone in the grand final. Western Suburbs lead Toronto 4 2 in the grand final. Smith now. Eddie Smith has filled the 5 uh, 8 position pretty well since he's come into the side. Mandy, in from his wing, looking for a bit of work, taking some pressure off the forwards. Law McDougall. Off rows to Dodd. One thing we see here, Mike, if you can notice, both Toronto centres, Glenn Friendo, just coming back now, but the three tackles there, the Toronto centres were together. Uh, that could have caused some problems for them if uh, West had to pick that up earlier. So out wide, Western Suburbs. Timmy Morrison plays it. Craig at uh, Wayne Dawson down in centre field. Greg Price tried to slip the pass to uh, Eddie Smith. He did well to uh, hang on to it. Last tackle now for Western Suburbs. Tony Price, Baker. Baker looking to link up again. He's caught. He throws the ball anywhere. Mickey Chan will come up in possession. And Baker's dirty with himself that he at least didn't get the kick in. No, he might, might have been le better looking for field position there. Obviously, he wasn't going to pass, put a little kick through and just gain those extra few metres. Toronto seem to be hanging off Neil Baker. They certainly are, Mike. You'll find Baker uh, loves to slide across the line and try and pick up his runners, and that's what he's been doing, and they have been hanging off him. Mark Hollis now for Toronto. They're back inside Western Suburbs territory by 12. Chan to Crawford. He's got to get himself involved if Toronto are going to uh, win this grand final of 1991. Good Mike. run that time from Wally Crawford. Wayne Dawson, not at all well on the far side of the field, Mike. Kevin Maas switches play. Crawford now looking to link up with Tobin, but Tobin went back inside. Last tackle now coming up from the Scorpions. Mara dummy half again. Friendo, what will he do this time? Hoist the ball high to centre field. Western Suburbs, Darren Tracy's there. Takes it well. Can't get out of the tackle of Mal Graham and Mark Hollis and Wayne Dawson. Uh, very groggily indeed, as you can see just in the background there, hands on hips. And he was hitting a solid tackle, we're just short of halfway. So for Western Suburbs, Forbes in plenty of strife here this afternoon in the first half of the Tui's Cup Grand Final. McDougal, he takes it up. I this has obviously got to start to work in Toronto's favour. That's exactly right. It's a very crucial part of the game. I think, I think Dorso should be replaced at the moment as an interchange. He's got plenty of time in the second half. they crucial 10 minutes before half time. West need 13 fit players on the field. Bowen to Tony Price to Smith. Gave a short ball to Baker once again. Can't get around the tackle of Chanton Crawford. Last tackle now for the Rosellas. They're starting to close that gap up as far as Western Suburbs are concerned out wide. Price now. Eddie Smith couldn't get his pass away and that'll be a turnover. But yeah. as I said, Craig, they're starting to close Baker down out, oh, out definitely. wide. I think they've tightened the defence up right out out wide. They realise what was going on and something's been done about it. Crawford now makes a half a bust and over the top went Tony Price with a swinging arm. Allowed to get up and play it. Step in the dark from Tony Price. Chant marginally forward to Danny McKelvey. Swivels out of one. And, as, and of course, with the Toronto Fords now, they should be looking to start to run at people That's like Dawson. Exactly right. the pitch. That's exactly right now. Graham Dawson. gives it back to Chant. Can he link up with any support? Decides to take a tackle and start to set field position. Now that's going to be a penalty to the Scorpions. And here's a chance for them to level proceedings in the 1991 Grand Final. I can't understand, West why they haven't replaced Wayne Dawson. I mean, he's had a hard game. He's just copped a bad knot on his head. He was groggy. In this day and age of interchange football, I'd give him a spell. 
So here is that last one, Greg Price. And you can yeah. see reaping the ball away. And Wally Crawford will step up now to have a shot at goal and try and level proceedings. Wally Crawford now. About to move in and try and level proceedings just before half time in the 91 grand final. And this would be a tremendous boost for Toronto if he can kick this and level the scores. Just inside the 22. Two around from the upright, moves in, it's high, and it's waved away to the right, and Western Suburbs will now try and run it out. Both sides have made an interchange, and we see David Steptoe coming in for Toronto. He's in number 31, and Michael Flanagan for the Western Suburbs, Rosellas. So Toronto using the interchange. I word, I think that was their plan, to uh, get the work out of Wayne Smith just before, uh, for the hard 30 minutes, and then to bring on a, uh, an impact player such as Steptoe. Be interesting to see the makeup of the West Pack. Michael Flanagan, he's a lock forward. So we could Step see that missing. Greg Price now steps out of a tackle, tried to get the pass away, knocked down by Mal Graham. And Toronto come up with possession, and it's the captain coach, Mal Graham. Tony Price went to uh, play at the ball. Mal Graham and Tony Price having a waltz, and Tony got a little left arm jab in to Mal, but he just shook it off, trying to marshal his troops now, just before half time. Can they level the scores? David Hill, he hasn't been terribly involved and hasn't been called on to do a great deal of work so far. Crawford now, cuts out one to Ma standing out wide in the backs. Red Hode hanging on, Ma still going, gets the pass away to Crawford now. He links up with Chan, Chan looking to link up, turns it back inside to Steptoe. And he can't get his arms free and brought down by McDougal. Good tackle right on the 22, but Toronto looking dangerous, starting well, to move the ball around. Yeah, they've got to start to put a few points on the board, but they did this the other week. They hammered and hammered West Line, but just couldn't get there. Crawford now, in centre field, gets up to play it, Forbes. They go to the hillside. Graham with a level, little left foot. Grubber kicks through into the in goal area, but it's going to be too deep. And the Western Suburbs, Rosellas, will have the restart for 22. I think uh, I think Toronto would be better served by playing out their full tackle count. I don't think that was five tackles, was it, that they played out? So I think West, West uh, are not a team renowned really for uh, doing the hard yards out of their own 22. I think they'd rather try and get it on the fringes, but Toronto, I think, would be better served by just punching away and punching away at uh, West and then trying to force a play on in goal or uh, a turnover right on the line. The Rosellas will be looking for oranges and a time to settle down. They lead 4-2 in the 91 grand final. Bowen to Tony Price. Now to Michael Flanagan, the new player on for the Western Suburbs Rosellas. Good strong run from him. Bowen now switches play to the grandstand side. Dodd shows it. Gives a magnificent ball to Greg Price. Up over the halfway. He's got Baker on the left. Gives it to Baker now. Can Frendo get there? Baker for the line. He gives it away to one nanny. Tapped down by Shane Tobin. And six, six to go, says referee Lovett. By G, they're defending well, the Scorpions. Play the ball. Toe through by Baker. Can he get there? And he goes dead in goal. And Toronto will have the restart the 22. Maybe the wrong option there by Neely. I suppose you've got to take your chances where you can. But they had six to go. Toronto are absolutely rattled, I think, as you called it. Bad option from Bake. Great short ball from Craig Dodds to uh, Greg Price. You see his brother, tiny brother, uh, looming up on the inside, but he likes to go to the outside to Neil Baker. Glenn Frendo, tremendous. Just slips away, but he did enough to force the play. And Baker got it back, and then uh, the little toe through, as you said, probably the wrong option in that situation. Forbes gets it away to Steptoe. You can just about throw a blanket over the Toronto Scorpions at the moment, although he's given a magnificent ball to David Hill. He's got Crawford in support. Can he beat the fullback? No. Brilliant tackle by the youngster Garth Brennan. And brought him down just inside the 22. End to end stuff at the moment. Crawford, the long pass out to Graham. Surely they've got the numbers. Hollis, Hollis trying to link up with Ryder. Ryder now for the line, he's in. And That's the Scorpions hit the lead in the 91 grand final here at Harker Oval. Just oh, what, what a try. Just what they need to ride on half time. That'll make now Graham happy. That's a great try from the, uh, the Scorpions. Great option from David Hill by taking the tackle. Toronto still had another four tackles. Brilliant pass here by Crawford. Yeah, here we go. Long ball by Crawford. Picks up Mal Graham. Mal Graham looks. He picks up Hollis. Hollis gets Tracy on his outside of him. He straightens up. Picks up Hollis on the wing. And there he goes. Good wingers try. That's right on half time. That's, that's great. Uh, that'll do Toronto. The G, they'll be uh, pumped up by that one. Here it is once again. Crawford from play the ball, a long pass, a double cutout pass to Mal Graham standing out wide in the backs. A good ball to Mark Collis, who really played Tracy up a treat, gave it a rider, and as a winger should, finished brilliantly in the corner. And Wally Crawford will now step in with the conversion attempt 
to give to Runo the half-time lead as the siren has already sounded here at Harker Oval and this will give them a great deal of confidence going into Oranges with the lead. And by G, wouldn't it be marvellous if they could win their first grand final? Oh, in yeah, there'll years? be some celebrating out the lake, but that was just a crucial try. The timing right on half-time. And I think the fresh reserves are going to make a bit of difference in this game. Already David Steptoe's starting to make inroads, whereas West, well, they've had to make two replacements already. I think it'll take its toll. They said football was going to be the winner here today. It certainly is proving that already. Wally Crawford now, a difficult kick. The breeze coming right across the round, round the corner kicker. Steps in, strikes it. It's not a bad looking right. kick, but it'll be away to the right, and actual oh, fact didn't oh. even make the distance. So at half time here at Harker Oval, we have a score line that reads the underdogs, the Toronto Scorpions six, leading the Western Suburbs Rosellas four. Neil Baker gets us underway the second half of the 1991 grand final here at Harker Oval. Toronto Scorpions in their first grand final in their 31 year history lead by two points. Here you go. You said in the break that uh, you think that's probably going to be enough. Toronto on a roll. Yeah, I think Toronto will get there. They'll be doing a bit of celebrating. I think West had their chance, of it, but some desperate defence by the Toronto players have cleaned them up. And I think Toronto, with the wind at their back and their second half form of late, they're going to get through. Richard? Well, it's, uh, it's, it's a long way from being finished yet, but someone like this big fella just charging up the field now. Is, uh, is going to have a big uh, impact on this game. I think if Toronto kick smart, as in G Frendo, as we watch him here now, he just places the ball. He doesn't, uh, although that's not as good a kick as you would have liked, but that's going to be the telling factor. And if they don't let this little fella run too much with the football, they should go OK. Let's have a look at the stats of the first half. Scrum is 5-4 in favour of Toronto, and that was one against the feed. The penalties, Toronto is 6-4 in their favour, and the errors, Western Suburbs. A stat that they wouldn't like terribly much at this stage. Craig Dodd gets his arms free, gets the pass back to Bowen. Western Suburbs standing around in sixes and sevens early in the second half. They really need to be at full intensity early in this second half to really pressure Toronto into a few mistakes. Oh, definitely. I wouldn't mind seeing later on the game Neil Baker maybe move into 5'8 and put Eddie Smith in the centre. There's a bit of direction there. Bakes will have to get involved. He's definitely a match winner. Hode, he takes it up. Good tackle out there again by Frendo and Mal Graham. Last tackle now for the Rosellas. Just at the start of the second half, Greg Price, Tony Price now. The little left foot kick to uh, Shane Taven, traps it well. And that was well played by the youngster, and he breaks the first line of defence, and that's a good run. That'll give him a heap of confidence going into the start of this second half. Taps it forward, the penalty goes to Toronto. So everything running their way at the moment. Well, it's uh, started out certainly that way. Uh, Toronto have got a little bit of an ounce of luck. It's a fair penalty there for Mr Lovett. He's uh, been on call all day. But... Um, all we need Toronto to see now, I think, is uh, set up a play. And all they really need to do is play out their six tackles because West have been unaccustomed to this. They've, they're being busted a little bit. They had the territorial advantage in the first half. They weren't able to convert. Toronto now, I think if they uh, can convert into some points here, we could see a real ball game. David Stepto breaks the first line again. Gives it to Mickey Tan. Has he got the pace to go on with it? No. A great tackle from behind from uh, Michael Flanagan. Now it's Tobin, taking a little bit of pressure off the forwards. Takes it up that 10 metres short of the uh, Western Suburbs line. Forbes now, they go the hillside to Kevin Maher, to Mal Malgram. He switches play back to Danny McKelvey. He straightens up and takes on the Western Suburbs forwards. 10 out from the line now. Toronto on the boil early in the second half. Forbes, they go right side once again. Stepto standing out wide. Got his pass, intercepted there by Neil Baker. Out to Patrick Nandy now. Oh, the speed machine, the up over halfway. He's beaten John McKelvey. Steps inside David Hill. Tries to step around him. Frendo goes, he gets out of Frendo's tackle. And Frendo comes from behind to clean him up. But Western Suburbs turning defence into attack. And that'll give them a lot of heart now. Nandy gets up to play it to Brennan. To Baker, who started that move. Greg Price now, behind the back pass to Tony Price. He can't get out of the tackle of Kevin Maher. Desperate defence there by Toronto. Plays the ball, a very ordinary play the ball. Bowen now from dummy half. Slips a pass to Law McDougal. He's on the ball to Tony Price. He's close. Gives it to McDougal Great and they're try. in. Great try there. Good ball, Tony Price. Great try, Law McDougal. On the spot. Well, Western Suburbs hit back. And as Richard Jones said, this grand final way from over as we have a look at the replay. There goes Paul Bowen from Dummy Half. He's brought down, he's done it, able to unload a pass to Lorne McDougall. Lorne keeps powering on, pops a short ball to Tony Price. Tackled by two plays as he go down, pops up the ball, Lorne McDougall under the post. What about that uh, pass from Price? Great, great. Here we go. This is what the Neil Baker intercept. 
Great pass. Put Nandy away. I thought Nandy would have scored from here. Great chase from Jock McKelvey, but he's just not fast enough. You see David Hill coming across in cover here. Nandy steps him in and away again. Friendo misses. Green Friendo. You're never dead in this game. He comes back and gets him again. What a change from one loose pass from Toronto. So Neil Baker now. Western Suburbs back in front in this grand final. A tremendous reply by the Rosellas. Baker now coming in to try and add the extras. He won't miss this one. This will be over the black dot and just about out of Harker Oval. But certainly up in the big tree. And the Western Suburbs Rosellas hit back here to lead 10 points to six with uh, nearly five minutes gone in the second half. Let's just take a look at that, uh, all the action once again. Baker did very well to handle this. He certainly did. He's got great hands, Neil. Once again, Patrick Nandy. Open space. No sore legs here. Now, when Nandy uh, got away from here, he beat McKelvey all ends up. He'll position himself fairly well to uh, close the gap. Friendo surprisingly missed this tackle, but he came again. Yeah, I think he got him stepping inside. Always hard to tackle like that. But obviously, as Jones, he said, no, you're never dead in this game. He comes back cleans him up there and Andy's having a big game he's made some great yardage today back to live action now Darren Tracy the Rosellas in front by four points all of a sudden the pendulum swings from uh, Toronto looking very comfortable with their two-point lead even though it was only two points to now here's an interception David Stepno the big front row is going to score oh we've just spoken about how the tide turns and Toronto are back in front be on the wing next week oh well, well next season anyway Great try, David Stepto. Opportunity try, James. Yeah, anticipation. Great hands and the big fella can run. Here it is. All season, Greg Price has hit his man on the chest with a leather, and David Stepto might have been too slow to get back on the spot. He was there, Johnny, on the spot, and he's going to score the big fella. It's uh, That's a great try. I think Pricey just probably forced that play a little bit too much as we see go through here again. Tony to his brother, Greg. He's just sliding across the line. Greg, he just didn't. He just didn't commit the line that way, that time, and uh, big step to, it's amazing how fast you can run when someone's chasing you, but that's, uh, that's an opportunist try. Well, we talked about him as an impact player, and he certainly has been an impact player. Well, he's re-grabbed the lead for Toronto, and Wally Crawford now, well, in actual fact, he uh, has just leveled the scores. That's 10 all. Crawford now coming in to uh, try and add the extras, and Toronto have swung another change. John Medlin, we talked about him earlier, and we'll talk about him a little bit uh, later on. David Hill heading to the sidelines. John Medlin on and fullback. Now, Wally Crawford, a crucial kick for him. This is to retake the lead for the Toronto Workers Scorpions. Crawford now. Around the corner kick. The breeze coming over his right shoulder. This should suit him. Moves in. Strikes it, it's high, it's away to the right. So Wally Crawford, one from four. Now, could that be a telling stat at the end of the match? David Hill to the sidelines, sore shoulder. Alongside of him, Wayne Smith. On for Toronto, John Medlin. You picked this uh, earlier today. You said that uh, maybe Johnny Medlin's may have even started the match. Yeah, there's no problems with Johnny Medlin going on. He's one, in my opinion anyway, he's one of the best fullbacks in the competition. To be able to have him sit, sitting on the sideline to come on, that's a big plus. Neil Baker with the restart. Down towards the try scorer, David Stepto. Takes it well. Gets an enormous cheer from the hill. Full of all the Toronto supporters. And by gee, they've come in their thousands today. Kevin Maher now. Slips out of his hands. That certainly wasn't a pass. Crawford picks up the crumbs. Gets out of one. And finally brought down by Michael Flanagan. So Toronto hit back immediately and it was important they hit back immediately well we talked about the game swinging from one end to the other uh, just as neil baker took the intercept for west to score up the other end and as soon as we blink as um toronto have taken intercept so it's been filled end of the field action for the first five minutes now we toronto had, had played a good set to uh set up down their other end of the field before baker's intercept they've hit back now with a good kick there from uh friendo the chase which it is needs to be spot on Garth Brennan now. The job of running it out for the Rosellas. Graham meets him in a solid tackle. But the youngster gets up to play it. To Price. Now Timmy Morrison. Haven't seen too much of Tim and he's had limited opportunities because it, the play's mainly gone to Patrick Nanny's wing on the left. Price now making some good metres from dummy half. He does that with monotonous regularity. Tony Price, Greg Price in there now looking for some work. Forbes, the good tackle. Bowen. They're not making too many metres. 
They're about 10 short of the halfway. Last tackle now for the Rosellas. Be important here for a good kick. Smith, they decide to run it. They've got a gap out here too. Tracy, up over the halfway. The little chip kicks just in behind the defence. Will a fine touch? No, but Mickey Chan will be bundled in a touch. And Western Suburbs will get the feed. Good kick and chase by the Rosellas. Yeah, good, good. Not a bad option there on the fifth tackle. You find that a lot of teams have their two wingers, halfback and fullback, out of the line on the fifth tackle. And Western, a team that like to exploit that. That's nine against 13. How Those important is that missed field goal opportunity early in the first half by Tony exactly Price? Right. Price to Smith. Dragged down by Mal Graham. Hogue. Professionalism from Mal Graham then. Yeah, Mal certainly looked after Tony Price today. Eddie Smith gets away. Law McDougall oh, and uh, oh. Toronto have been pinged for inside the five. Now here's a chance for Baker. Played the advantage, but this could be an easy two points for Neil Baker, even though he hasn't had his kicking boots on, but he should put this one away. Neil Baker, one from three. A chance for the Rosellas to retake the lead. The pressure on the captain coach. The former Winfield Cupper with South and Penrith. Moves in. And Canterbury moves in. Strikes it well, but it's away to the right once again. So both kickers, one from four. So Brett Ryder now with a restart. And that's a pretty good uh, drop kick down into Western Suburbs territory. Nandy now. Knee heavily bandaged. McKelvey drives him back. Dot a dummy half for the Rosellas. Tony Price. Brennan up looking for a little bit of work. The backs need to uh, take some pressure off the forwards during the second half. Oh, definitely. You know, West have got it. You know, they're dangerous when they start to swing the ball and they can't get away from their natural flowing game. Goes the short side once again. Price to Baker to Tracy. There in defence is Ryder and Crawford's there to finish him off. Five short of the halfway. Dodd, Tony Price, now to Hode. Takes it up strongly. McKelvey's there and they drive him back. Keep him in his own territory. Last tackle now for the Rosellas. Decide to run it again. Tony Price goes back to the middle. The little grubber kicks through. What's going to happen here? Ryder's across and so is also Mickey Chant. And they clean up the Toronto Scorpions. Now a chance for them to do a little bit of attack. Medlin seizes the opportunity and just centres play. Now it could be a situation from these play the ball Jonesy where players are starting to get a little tired the fresh players could make some easy meters up they the certainly middle are. plus uh, smart dummy half runners oh, a crucial mistake there from step to it's, uh, it's uh, players like Jamie Forbes and Paul Bowen that are very good dummy half runners we expect now to come into their own because uh, as you just said Mike that the uh, some of the players are uh, at market situations aren't uh, clued in as, as much as they should 10 all in the grand final pressure time for both teams the nerves would be uh, tingling out there with the excitement as you said uh, Craig that uh, field goal attempt by Tony Price in the first half could be crucial but I'm sure if the score remains at 10 all there'll be plenty more shots at goal with a field goal attempt oh definitely mate I can see him hit in the middle and then pop looking for that one point bit of a shot from uh, Mal then on uh, on his rival coach Neil Baker but uh, I don't think there was a great there a minute it wasn't uh, no, there's a bit of pushing and shoving going on there so the first real blow up in the grand final Referee Lovett uh, has a few things under control here. Neil Baker on his back at the moment. But uh, I don't think there was a great deal in that. Obviously, Bakes has called him something, a nasty name or something, and Mouse just didn't like it. Let's see if we can pick up that incident with Mal Graham. Now, there is Eddie Smith. The run around with Baker. Oh, there was absolutely nothing in that whatsoever. Oh, that's, that's Academy Award to Neil Baker in the 91 Grand Final. That's where the touch judges should come, up, come in on that, Jonesy. Obviously, there was nothing in that whatsoever. Bakes has milked it to the end. And, uh, you know, that's where they should come in and assist the referee. Obviously, he doesn't know what's happening. Here we go. There may be a little bit of justice here. It didn't find touch. So that's what the ref, that's what the touch judges are here for. They should go in and call the players they see. That's, that's absolutely nothing. In that. That's a, a, and a bad call from uh, referee Lovett. I mean, he's, only, he's relying on his um, touch judges and didn't get any help, so he... Uh, he called it possibly as the crowd saw it. The McKelvey boys on the boil for the Scorpions. Good run by Danny and then John. Forbes, they go to the grandstand side once again. Chant, here's where Kevin Maher is dangerous. A brilliant ball to Ryder. He's away. He's got to beat Garth Brennan. He's got support and gives it to Holland. Right. And the Scorpions are front, in front right. in the grand final. Kevin Maher, full marks. Yeah, they've wrapped him up most of the day, but takes one ball, slipped a beautiful ball. Try time. 
who's always going to pass that. Here we're coming in. Jamie Forbes, Mick Chant, Kevin Maher and his familiar role of running wide, sliding away from the ruck. Great one-hand pass around the corner. Ryder did well to hang on. He oh, certainly definitely. did. And look at his positioning here of, of Mark Hollis. He had in, in or outside. Took young Brennan. There was no chance. He ended up with the daisies, Brennan. So Toronto back in front as we have a look at the action once again. Yeah, there we go. Chan again, Ma stands in the tackle. He just gathers that one in. Oh, nearly lost that ball there. Hollis shows a lot of pace for a big bloke. As Jonesy said, left or right, picks up Hollis. Try time. Wally Crawford now with a very crucial kick in the grand final. One from four. He's missed some relatively easy shots by his standards. Can he kick one from the sideline to convert the Mark Hollis try? This is to give them a six-point lead. Moves in, strikes a well, but it's a shocking kick away to the left. And the score remains here at Harker Oval. Toronto 14, Western Suburbs 10. So Neil Bacon with a restart. Hollis, the try scorer, takes it well. Toronto in front by 14. But uh, we've seen this game fluctuate so many times that the Rosellas certainly aren't out of this yet. No, they're not, Mike. But uh, West are playing an unfamiliar game that they have. And they have been all year. They've been bustled out of the play. Very short there from referee Lovett. Jonesy, obviously that loss of Tony McDonald, then Wayne Dawson. It's got to play havoc with him. Oh, I'll let you go. Something's up there. Well, that was a fair dick headbutt by Law McDougall. We'll have a look at that again. And he's lucky to be out there. Here it is again. Forbes took it up behind referee Lovett. Here's McDougall. He's got him. Now he throws him to the ground. Have a look at this. Bang. Thanks for coming. Oh, he got him all right. At least Ooh. a sin in offence there. At least. Irrespective grand final or not, that was a, just a dead set headbutt. I, I, I got four, four weeks in Sydney years ago for one of them. Yeah, he, I'd say he'd be lucky to stay on the field. It depends on what re report the touch judge gives, but he hasn't given one. <laughs> Here it is again. We'll have a look at it. He stayed on the field. No action's being taken. Forbes has been thrown down, and in he went. Bang. But Toronto get the penalty. More the point, and here's a real chance for them to put some extra pressure on Western Suburbs. Yeah, maybe a bit of frustration creeping in there. Lorma Dewell's not normally that sort of player, and to do that in front of the referee, you're giving up an easy 25 metres there. Yeah, uh, I think it's definitely frustration there. Look, uh, Lawn's not, not, a, not a dirty player. He's a very tough player, but I think he's probably picked the wrong bloke to headbutt there. You just don't headbutt hookers. Because <laughs> their heads are too hard. <laughs> There's nothing in them. And, and there is nothing you can do to improve their looks as Forbes gives a short ball to Ryder. He's away. He's going to score the winger. Is he no? Just held up, Brett Ryder. Or is he in? No, he's pulled up. up. Great play, Garth Brennan. Toronto continuing their second half comeback as, as, as they have over the previous weeks and they're really putting the pressure on West. Here we go. Jamie Forbes, oh, Messi play the ball. Jamie Forbes picks up the ball, looks for Ryder. There he goes down the touchline again. He comes to the fullback. Fullback holds him up and that player can't see who it is, but he stopped him from grounding the ball. No try. Well, in actual fact, Brett Ryder probably should have gone straight over the I top of the so. I believe that Winger should go for the corner. And he seemed to have a lot of room on the side. But anyway, here we go. Back to the game. Centre play. Brett Hode now gets up to play with play the ball for the Rosellas. They're under a bit of pressure here. And Craig Dodd makes the blue. And the scrum will go down right on the 22 in front of the uprights. That could be a very telling factor in this game. West, as I said, playing the unfamiliar game, being bustled in their own 22. They've given Toronto just too much ball. Yeah, this is where they've got to keep their heads, West, and just play it. Just keep, as you said, Jones, you just keep cool. Wally Crawford now, looking to link up. They're looking to offload all the time and keep the pressure on the Rosellas. A dummy half, Mick Chant, who's had a pretty good game this afternoon. In actual fact, there hasn't been too many passengers in either side. Kevin Maher takes it up strongly. He's come into his own late in the second half. Jamie Forbes now. He's worked hard all day. The little dummy run. Chant offloads to McKelvey. And they're doing a devil of a job just to stop this Toronto onslaught at the moment, the Rosellas. McKelvey plays it quickly to Forbes. Forbes now to Chant. Cuts out one. Graham standing out wide. Tries to burst through to the defence. And it takes three Rosellas to stop him. He's about eight metres out now, the captain coach. Forbes. They come grandstand side. Step toe. Can he offload? Try to get it around the back to Ma. And play on says referee love it. But he had his hands free there, and if that had a stuck, they were in again. Oh, yeah, d dangerous play, Kevin May. He's got that ability to go around the corner with the ball and pop a short one, and Toronto always back him up. 
So the Rosellas now, everything to do from inside their own 22. But Jamesy, we've seen them very dangerous from this position a few games. That's exactly right. But uh, as we see there, Mel Baker being called up to forward pass. He's not too happy about the position. And Mal Graham delighted with it as he gives Kevin Maher and Johnny McKelvey a couple of high fives there. So Toronto with the ascendancy at the moment. Again, yeah. mistakes from Western, their own 22. Yeah, you can't just cough up ball like that. Not in a grand final. You only get one chance, and they've got to make those balls stick. This constant pressure could tell on West here. They, uh, they haven't been in too many positions like this this year. Toronto with a, with a head full of uh, confidence. Friendo. He takes it up. Hasn't been sighted too much in general play through the day, but he can be a danger as the Western Suburbs defence start to tire. Hollis now, he's looking for work. Breaks out a one tackle, brought down by Darren Tracy now. They're on the boil here, the Scorpions. Inside the 10, Forbes now takes it up. What can he do here? Brought down in a good tackle by Greg Price, but he was still looking to try and offload Jamie Forbes. Crawford at dummy half. Gets up slowly, plays the ball to Crawford, to Frendo. Gives the ball to Ma, who stands and uh, delivers now to Frendo. Frendo, he sights a little gap. Gives the ball to uh, Mickey Chan. He's very close, but spills the ball on Garth Brennan's in. Controlled by Western Suburbs. Gets out of one, gets out of two. Garth Brennan, he can't link up. His support overran him, but a good comeback by the fullback. Great recovery there from Garth Brennan. He, uh, he assessed this situation. All he did was needed some yards, and he, uh, he obtained 20 or 30 metres there for West. Western Suburbs down by four points. A converted try will get him back in front of the 91 grand final. But he gave by Jean's been a good game of footy oh, so far. Oh, definitely. One, one end to the other. And it's not like normal grand finals are sort of dour affair, but this game's just gone from one end to the other. They're throwing the ball around. Oh, bad error there by West. Again, they put themselves under pressure. And they've just, they're just got to hang on to this fourth. They're going to be any chance. Well, there's still plenty of time left in this 91 grand final. Probably no need at this stage to uh, force the play. So Garth Brennan to the sidelines, just getting a towel down. It's a new rule that uh, has been instigated throughout uh, rugby league this year, the blood bin. So Garth Brennan just having a little sit. Peter Atkins on for Western Suburbs. And uh, really, they won't lose a great deal. Wacko can certainly turn on the, the attack. No, gee, when you talk about West being an attacking side, they've bought him one of their best, Peter Atkins. Law McDougall. 10-6, the handling errors in favour of Western Suburbs. Could that be a telling factor? Eddie Smith now trying to get his side to go forward. Tracy with a good pass to Nandy. Steps once, but brought down by the Toronto defence once again. Five short of the halfway. Baker at dummy half. Plenty of cover to run on. They're scrambling very, very well. That could, uh, their confidence is obviously sky high, especially in their defensive line. Western Suburbs having trouble getting this line to spread out. Greg Price, the long ball over the top to Timmy Morris, and they're on the attack now. Hode, down the touchline. Can he beat Chant? No, a brilliant tackle by the halfback, Mickey Chan. 20 metres out. Atkins gives it to Greg Price. Another long cutout pass to Baker. Baker to Morris, and then he drops the ball, penalty, but tapped away, offside. and it's a penalty. Penalty, definitely offside the Toronto backs. Just couldn't scramble quick enough then. Spread balls. Quick play the ball. Tony Price now. Ten metres out, there's another penalty. What will they do here? Will they take the shot or will they go for touch? I'd say he's got to go for touch. But is that a sin bin offence? You've got to wonder well, because... Well, certainly, uh, Tony Price read that play very well. He knew those players were offside. He took the quick tap and ran straight into them. Yeah, well, well, that's deliberate offside. That's right. They've been using it in the sin bin, so that's an interesting call. Greg Price restarts play now. Charges towards the touch line. He's over and held up. Oh, Solid decision. play. Solid play to him. They knew exactly, I think, there what they were going to do. They just carried him over. He was in no worries that, that he wasn't going to score. They've obtained a scrum with the feed. Here it is. Baker to Morrison. Now it was tapped down by no, I, I believe I believe the penalty is not for the uh, infringement in the ruck area. It's, it's for the offside play. That was a bad option there by Wes. Two points. There's still I plenty believe, of yeah, time. My word. Two points would have been utmost. Toronto now have just got a great kick in the pants for that. They've held, they've held West out, something that they do very good, and they couldn't convert West. 15 minutes to go in the 91 grand final. Frendo stands in the tackle, and then Bowen just falls on him. And there was probably no need for that, and Glenn Frendo just soaking up a little bit of time. It's the Bundy splash from Bowie. So time off call by referee. The what? The Bundy splash off the top, right? Watch this. There is no need for this, but... 
Again, frustration. Trying to slow the play down. Glenn Frendo wasn't getting up after that. He's too old and experienced for that. <laughs> yeah, the old body can't take that. So Danny McKelvey now, Toronto, with a four-point lead. 14 minutes to go in the grand final. David Steptoe. Both sides now to uh, cement a place in history. Must cut out all mistakes here. Play mistake-free football as we head down the final minutes of this grand final. Jamie Forbes at dummy half. Back to Glenn Frendo. Let's get out of here, he says. And that's not a bad kick from Frendo. That's deep in the Western Suburbs territory. In actual fact, it's going to be too deep. It's gone dead in goal. And West will get the restart from the 22. As we said, not much power, Glenny Frendo. But, gee, he just got that impeccable timing. and Position. He, yeah, always into vacant spaces. A very important set of six tackles this for, uh, for Western Suburbs. Uh, for Toronto, at least. Uh, they can hold West here and get a turnover around halfway or in that grey area in between the 22s. They'll go a long way in this grand final. Greg Price. Brett Hode trying to bust out of a tackle, but he was finally brought down there by Shane Tobin and Mal Graham. Bowen, who's lived at dummy half all day. Tony Price. Hasn't had the influence on the grand final that uh, a lot of people expected him to have. However, here he is, as I speak, Atkins. A magnificent ball to Tony Price. He throws it away, and Toronto are back in possession. Again, mistakes costing West dearly. They've just got to control this ball. They've got about 12 minutes to go. If they can maintain, anything can happen. Brendo grabs a cross field right on the halfway. I met there in some solid defence by Darren Tracy. Pushed away, and referee Lovett says, come back here, Glenn, play the ball. Brett Ryder now, he has a run. Frustration again from the Western Suburbs players. They're, uh, as I keep saying, they've been rattled by this Toronto onslaught, and uh, it's just not happening for Western at the moment. David stepped a good, solid run, gained a few metres for the Scorps. Forbes, both hookers really have lived in the dummy half position. McKilby breaks the first line of defence, but brought down by Lorne McDougal. Actually, actually, Mike, that's what uh, coaches really like hookers to do, is live in the dummy half area. So they get paid for. Well, I suppose if you're the coach and the hooker, well, you've got to be somewhere where you're not too involved in the play. <laughs> but if you're not, you just blame someone else. Glenn Frendo, great kick for touch. Yeah, and finds again touch. he does it. Again he does a great kick. He just yeah. saw positioning here. I think this is the game that Toronto must play now. What they should do is work for the corners. If they can't get a shot at Toronto, they should kick for in goal, uh, um, for the sideline. Force the scrum situation. It's a situation where the Toronto defensive line is a set one, and West don't have the uh, time to play that they, those games that they really like to. Oh, against the head. Jamie Forbes, second scrum against the head. So what can they do here now, the Scorpions? Ryder, he sees a little gap and charges towards the line. It closed. Bowen, there to make the good defence along with Brett Hode. But the Scorpions now, really on the boil. Far for the line, he's brought down two metres short. Will they set themselves for the field goal? They'll have a, probably another charge for the line. Steptoe, which side will he go? Goes uh, right. Mickey Chant now. The gap closes with Atkins making the defence along with Eddie Smith. But Western Suburbs under enormous pressure here. Forbes again. Gives it off to Danny McKelvey. He can't get his arms free and he's held up a metre out. Now last tackle coming up. Will they set themselves for the field goal? Who are the field goal kickers in the Toronto side? Gets up now McKelvey to play it. Kevin Gives Ma. it to Forbes. Back to Kevin Ma. He has a shot for field goal and it's over. And the Toronto Scorpions have a five point lead in the grand final. Craig Higgins, is it enough? I think it could be. I think they. I think with five points up, with only about ten minutes to go, I think they're in a big chance. Kevin Maher obviously been to the Richard Jones School of Field Goal kicking. Let's take a look at that Kevin Maher field goal, Richard Jones. You see Kevin Maher setting himself a couple of tackles before that. Jamie Fulks, great long pass, plenty of time, Kevin, and over she goes. So back to live action, we've got a scrum 15 metres out from the Toronto line. The kickoff from Neil Baker was uh, touched by a Toronto player, I think it was Wally Crawford, and went into touch. So Western Suburbs now, can they rally? Price gives a brilliant ball, Eddie Smith to Timmy Morrison, couldn't get his arms free to give the pass to Atkins. Gets up and plays it now, 10 out. The Western Suburbs, Rosellas. Eddie Smith now just takes a stepper. They are five out. The converted try and put him in front. Price gives it out to Law McDougall. The defence is eager to get in there and get him, and they finally bring him down. His knee was bent from underneath him. Bowen now gives it to Craig Dodd. Shows the ball once, but just met there solidly by Chan and also stepped away over the top. Greg Price switches play to the, to the uh, hillside. Tony Price, can he link up? Nearly gets out of the tackle. 
Gives the pass away to Patrick Nanny. That should be six to go. Last tackle, says referee Lovett. Knocked down by a Toronto player there. Red Price now. Baker. Gives the ball away to McDougal. McDougal now. Nowhere to go. Bowen. Goes the little grubber kick. And Johnny McKelvey's there. And he's pinged down by a great tackle by Bowen in the end goal. And Toronto will have the dropout. Good pressure by the Rosellas. Yeah, my word. Paul Bowen turned himself in that tackle. He doesn't look at all well. It was a good play. He scores a double girl on, uh, on Toronto. West will now receive the ball back without a uh, dummy half. What I must say about that Kevin, Kevin Marfell goal, five-point lead is not as good as a seven-point lead because West are only six tackles away or one tackle away. They're attacking now. They're, they're in a much better field position. So the pressure for the Scorpions. Time starting to run out for Western Suburbs. Set to make a replacement. Looks like number 19. Haven't, haven't word of who that is yet, but it looks like he's going yeah. on to replace some. Frank, Frank Elmer. Elmer. Yeah, it was a reserve grade hooker. He's, uh, yeah. he's not a bad young player, actually, whether he can handle this pressure situation. Nandy now runs straight into the Toronto defence of Tobin and Defendo has stood firm on that occasion. Flanagan gives it off to Atkins. Atkins now to Morrison. Morrison takes it up. The tension's enormous here at Harker Oval in the 91 Grand Final. Elmer now to Dodd. Ma misses him. And Chant and also Mal Graham in there. Graham should know the recipe for success from this situation. Dodd. Price. Short ball to Greg Price. Turn back inside to uh, Brett Hode. He runs straight into Kevin Maher. Gee, it's desperate defence at the moment. Well, it's got to be, Mike. It's a grand final. They're only five points in front. West bombarding their line. Greg Price now. What can he do? Stands. Swivels out of the tackle. Greg Price tries to get his arms free to deliver the pass, oh, but can't do so. And Toronto are in possession, are they? Or is the scrum going to pack down? Five metres out. I don't know who's going to give the feed to here, but obviously Toronto will hope it's for them. The umpire's seen something here that we haven't. I, uh... With uh, only about uh, nine, seven minutes to go in the 91 grand final, Toronto 15, lead Western Suburbs 10. And the penalty goes to Western Suburbs. Now, what have they got to do here? Have they got to press or will they take the kick? Yeah, tough call. I don't, actually, I wouldn't like to be making the decision, but I think they're going to take the tap. Mr. Lovett wasn't too, but uh, to make a decision. He's he's made the decision. He feels right. I just hope it's uh, not the wrong one. Hode close to the line now for the Rosellas. They're only five metres out. Toronto under pressure now. They lead by five. Tony Price gives it a Greg Price. Stands. The support overran him. Forced back a couple of metres. But they're still well within striking distance. Baker now. A long pass out to Tony Price. Tony Price gives it to Darren Tracy. Can he get his arms free to deliver the pass? No and good swarming defence by the Scorpions. He's got to play the ball now. Still about eight metres out. Tony Price goes for the line. He's held up once again. And he's awarded the try. Western that. Suburbs are in. Good strong surge oh, there he? from... Uh, or has he? No, he hasn't. Held up. And the scrum will right. go down for a minute there. I thought he'd uh, awarded the try. Brave decision from referee Lovett. He's uh, obviously without the aid of uh, in goal judges. He's uh, right there on the spot. He's made two brave decisions in the space of a couple of minutes. That's got to give Toronto confidence. The whole West out, I think, was two lots of six, and they're pounding their line. That's and 12 tackles, Greg. And they've got a relieving penalty. So here it is. Could this be the turning point of the grand final? Let's take a look at that uh, last surge by Tony Price. Here he is on the boil, gets close to the line. In actual fact, Toronto throw him towards the line, but uh, he was held up and the scrum went down. Now, Toronto with a relieving penalty. Is this enough for them to wrap up the grand final? Mike, seven minutes is a long time in a grand final. I'm sure that uh, Mal Graham will be inter interested in a good set of six tackles. Good work by Jamie Forbes there. He has had a big game today. Forbes to David Steptoe. He takes it up the four, is just grafting one out stuff at the moment. But that's probably what they need to do here. As Richard and Craig have said, a good set of six here is imperative as Kevin Maher makes some space. No time for some ben fancy ball work here. Just die with the ball, and if the opportunity presents itself, take it. Forbes now. He scampers from dummy half, Jamie Forbes. Gets out of some tackles. He's close. He couldn't get his arms free. What a run by the hooker. Good Ten metres two. out. Took the tackle, Jamie Forbes. Chant to Kevin Maher. Hollis. They needed a very good surge then, and they just fell away. I think Kevin Maher would have been better off taking the ball to the line himself. Kevin Maher now. The big up and under from the second rower. They're all on They're side. charging through. Good Mark, can he take it? He good grabs kick. it. He dives over. And what's That's referee right. Lovett done? It's a score. And Toronto create history here. Surely that's the 91 grand final. As Kevin Maher scores for the Scorpions. Oh, he's showing a few skills here. Field goals, up and unders. 
get him a game with the Swans away. He went up for that one. We look at it here. Ma puts up the big boot. It's a high Gary Owens. Through he goes. He's only got the up nice and high, and it's his ball over the line. That's a try. Great work, Kevin Ma. Great try. Well deserved, Kevin Ma. He's had an outstanding game as far as I'm concerned. So a magnificent performance by Kevin Maher on the Toronto side. Kenny Royal, the hard-working president, out there as one of the medicos. There he is in shot now. He's just saying to his players, settle. He hasn't, uh, not uh, confident enough to say that they've got it in the bag of by G. Jonesy. It'll be a, a Herculean effort for West to get back now. Toronto again. Here we go. Now, he just, Kevin just waited his time. The West player went above him and he was... Uh, too full of confidence, Kevin, and there he is. He didn't enjoy that very much. And the hill has just gone crazy with green and gold streamers everywhere as they cheer their side back. And that's given them the extra leg, and that certainly has put a nail on the coffin as far as the Rosellas are concerned. Oh, definitely. I think, obviously, Toronto just consolidate. Now they'll play basic football, and I can't see West coming back. And, well, the fairy, another fairy tale, another team that they said couldn't do it, are going to get up and do it. Just looking at West behind the line there, they've, uh, they're not even talking to each other. I don't know what Nell can say to them now. Toronto, it's been a closer game than we uh, possi possibly, uh, uh, a greater score than we possibly thought if Toronto were going to get away with it, but uh, as we see Wally, Wally Crawford just lining up. Obviously, Mao's going to be one happy man in there. He's kicked it! And Two it. from six for Wally Crawford, and the Scorpions look to have this grand final shot to pieces. They lead 21 points to 10 with only two and a half minutes left. And surely that's the grand final. They talk about Cinderella stuff, dreams coming true. Well, out Toronto way, start celebrating. She's all over Red Rover. As Forbes makes the break and it hasn't gone the 10. So that will be a penalty to the Scorpions for sure. No, it isn't. Western Suburbs, Forbes up inside. Yeah, I think Neil Baker did a bit of refereeing himself there. I think referee Paul Lovett was going to go the other way, but Neil's informed him of the rules. And Jamie Forbes caught the ball inside the 10. But I think it's too late for West. He was away. Jamie Forbes just having himself on the forehead, saying obviously a hooker's mistake. Yeah, it's good to see a hooker with a bit of pace, actually. Yeah, but I taught Jamie everything. No, just... <laughs> Timmy Morrison now, the restart. Last throw of the eyes for Western Suburbs. Law McDougall. Kevin Maher now. He gets out of Maher's tackle. Law McDougall, right. he won't give him, but they bundle him over the sideline. Well, and it'll be a Toronto feed. Kevin think... Maher again involved in it been the story of the day. I think West have just made too many errors in critical positions. They've just been forced to play a game that it's been unaccustomed to them. It's 16 games. So, uh, Toronto, all they have to do now is just, just take their time, play professional. I'm sure that's in Mal and Kevin Maher's minds. The crowd over the hills going, got the chant up for the Toronto workers. Anyway, they know they've got it one. Mr. Lovett's uh, giving West some uh, penalties here. I'm not sure what that one's for. Well, maybe he's penalised the uh, Toronto ball boy for not getting the ball back quickly <laughs> enough. Might send the ball boy to the Sydney. So I don't uh, think they've got enough time here, Western Suburbs. It would be an absolute miracle. They've just got to throw it around willy nilly now as Law McDougall takes it up. He hasn't stopped trying for the Western Suburbs Rosellas. It'll be pretty hard to hear the siren here. And there's another uh, penalty to uh, Western Suburbs as David Stepto gets 10 in the bin. And he certainly won't be going to the Shaz. He's going to stay out here on Harker Oval to savour every minute of this great grand final victory to the Scorpions. He's had a big day. Big game, David Stepto. Huh? Baker. Intercepted. They're away. Mark Hollis. Oh, he's got Ryder in support. Brett Ryder certainly will be quick enough. He gives it to Ryder. Can he beat Atkins? No. He gives it back inside to Hollis, who gets his toe to it. He can't control it. Ryder comes back. Six to go, says referee Lovett. But Toronto have certainly shut it down now. A great break. An intercept there by Mark Collis. Mel Graham, they haven't given up. They want more points, the Scorpions. As Shane Tobin said, I'd love a grand final try. And by G, he's pretty close. He's only a metre out. Tobin now gets up to play it. Little knock on in there. Missed by Lovett. He toes it forward. And Western Savage back in possession. I don't think that'll worry Toronto too much. This is theirs now. They Greg Bryce. Shut down. They really need to shut the play down now, Toronto. West are going to have to play desperation stakes to get the ball out of their 22. Some weary Western Suburbs players as it's towed forward by Kevin Maher. Six to go for the Rosellas. But it's been a marvellous performance and a well-deserved one. Tony Price now. He's trying everything. Chicken but there's not enough time. Tony Price is uh, still alive in this game. Same as this fellow, Lorne McDougall. He's tried his absolute guts out today. So Western Suburbs still in there. Still trying to uh, do something, pull something out of the bag as uh, Baker kicks over the top. 
Eddie Smith overruns it. Atkins knocks on, and Medlin's in control for the Scorpions. That's it. And there it is. That's all over. The fairy tales come through here at Harker Oval. Would you believe it? Toronto, the 1991 Cooey's Cup Grand Final champions. And all we can say is the Newcastle Rugby League, what a great day. Oh, definitely a great day. A big crowd. The underdogs win. Toronto, first premiership ever. And obviously, big night down at the Toronto Workers tonight. Richard Jones, your summation of the grand final. Uh, great game. As I said all game, I think Toronto, they paid the uh, the dividends for sticking with it in the first half. They, uh, they just grinded away and grinded away. Let's have a look at the scoreboard for Toronto. 21-10 victors over Western Suburbs. Tries to Rhino, Steptoe, Hollis and Ma. And Wally Crawford kicked two from seven. And Kevin Ma kicked the field goal. For the Western Suburbs, Rosellas, Patrick Nandy and Law McDougall at try each. And one goal to Neil Baker. Kenny a dream 31 years you said you weren't going to celebrate last week but by G you can let your hair down now oh, bloody oath mate no way we won't party for a week can you explain the feeling no no I can't enjoy it Kenny congratulations thank you Neil obviously a bit of disappointment today but you take nothing away from Toronto by G they played hard in that second half well mate they deserve their victory but mate I'll, I'll say one thing, Neil Baker played dumb today. The boot was off a little bit. Everyone tried their hardest and uh, you can take nothing away from everyone who was out there today, including yourself, Bakes. It's been a hard season for one that got away from you today. Probably just a little too many errors at crucial times. Mate, good luck to Toronto. They deserve everything they're getting today. We're out pioneered by a good side. They deserve what they get. Bakes, congratulations on a great season. Thanks, mate. Mal, uh, a marvellous performance today. You've got to be very, very proud of your troops. The, the victory is a lot sweeter here at Argar Oval. Well, that's right. Uh, as I mentioned before, the critics wrote us off. But today it was a 50-50 chance. Anything can happen in the grand final. We took our chances. We showed the commitment for the full 80 minutes and we got the desired result. A, se a sensational first half. He led it 4-2 and uh, that was a chance, a crucial part of the game to be so close at half time. Well, ex exactly. I said if the score were even or in close proximity at half time, we'd run away with the get game and we bombed a few tries too so I think we created enough chances to win by a further margin. West uh, came back at you hard, your defence right on their, on your own try line was uh, sensational there and that probably turned the tide. Well we knew they wouldn't give up, they tried to catch us out wide at all times but we scrambled and we scrambled and the blokes just you know battled for 80 minutes, pulled off vital tackles and in the end it was just 13 courageous men. Well you deserve your victory, go with that victory lap, congratulations, creating a fairy tale story here, 31 years and you've now got the Premiership, congratulations. Thanks very much Mike. Well done, Mike. So great performance by Toronto today. Worthy winners of the Tui's Cup, Newcastle Rugby League trophy for 1991. Neil Baker and his side, Western Suburbs, played extremely well today. And what a grand final it was. What a crowd. And out Toronto way, you'll be able to celebrate for a month. On behalf of Richard Jones, Craig Higgins and all the crew here, I'm Mike Rabit bidding you a very good afternoon. bursting with pride, the green and golds looked like the walking wounded. Some of the bruises had been won during the Scorpions 21 to 10 victory over Wests on Sunday. It was a little bit of an elbow but nothing major. But most of the Scorpions had lost their sting from two days of non-stop celebrating since the club won its first major trophy in 31 years of competition. Along the boulevard, shopkeepers were preparing for the street march some hoping to make a buck out of the bash, others, like the local liquor shop, expecting more of what's been a bottler business since Sunday. Conquerors. Still drinking mood, yes. Very busy with the boys. To the club's theme song, 
the team marched into the main street and into the adulation of the Toronto people. <laughs> Finally, after three decades, Toronto's league followers had something to whistle about. <laughs> Captain Mal Graham was a hero under siege. I knew we were going to have a street parade, but I didn't expect so many people to be decked out, and uh, especially the school kids and the streamers, and you know, it's absolutely fantastic. Toronto's favourite footballing son, Lyle Peacock, watched from the wings. Mayor Ivan Welsh hailed the league. Con there league every time we can. Then for the Scorpions, it was back to the beer. Scott Bevan, NBN News. Well done, the Scorpions. That's how